Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And you know that 82% of the women that come into my practice for the first time are on a thyroid medication. They're taking a thyroid medication. And when I ask them why you're taking it, they say, oh, I've got hypothyroidism, low thyroid. That isn't a diagnosis, folks. That's an observation. Think about this. Somewhere sometime, a doctor tested one or two thyroid numbers, said, oh, you're low. Here's a medication for you. They don't really properly monitor the levels, but you are doomed and destined to be on that medication until you die without knowing what the devil you're treating. The commonest disease is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease that you cause to yourself. Your genetics contributed, but you cause to yourself. So one of the things that I do in my practice to everybody, when you first come in, whether you're diagnosed with thyroid disease or not, male or female, I'm going to do a full set of thyroid blood markers. And if your doctor is, if your family doctor is not ordering a full set of uh, thyroid biomarkers in the modern era, in the sarcophagus modern era, I'll explain what sarcoph sarcophagy means in a few a little bit, but think ancient Egypt. If, if your doctor is not ordering a full set of thyroid blood work and doesn't know how to interpret it, we've got a problem. So, the first set of blood work that we do after our first visit, I will look at TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone from your brain. I will look at your total T4, total T3, which reflect a little bit on iodine production, uh, iodine consumption. And I will look at your free T3 and your free T4, which are the two hormones that are functionally active in your metabolic biology and that are regulatory or quarterback hormones together with insulin, testosterone, and human growth hormone. And we look at those levels and we look at the feedback. In addition, I, I used to, but I'm not, I don't anymore do reverse T3. I just haven't found that the reverse hormone has been that helpful. I can tell what's going on without it. Occasionally, I'll still get it, but I don't do RT3 anymore. We used to. But the other three things that I'll get, I'll definitely get a thyroglobulin antibody and a thyroid peroxidase antibody because the commonest cause of thyroid disease is Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease against the thyroid. So I'll test for that. Occasionally, occasionally, I'll test for Graves' disease by doing a thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, TSI. And every now and then, if I'm worried about the structure of your thyroid, I may get an ultrasound of your thyroid. But cancer and goiter and the structural abnormalities are ultrasound related, the hormone, and, and they may also be hormonally active. That nodule may be a hot nodule that's secreting hormone, but that's an unusual disease. For the most part, a normal or a slightly increased size in the gland is just not functioning properly because of antibodies that are cross-reacting, that are triggered by something that you encounter in the world and cross-react. And from what I know, and I'm quoting something here. From what I've read, this is a comment from somebody in our internal group, but I corroborate this. Hashimoto's is pretty clearly derived from weak toxicity. And I would expand that because we don't specifically know, but I would tell you that Hashimoto's disease is directly caused by a grain product protein. We just don't know which one. But some protein in grain, the body reacts to it and it looks very similar to thyroid hormone. That antibody then reacts against the grain product, but also reacts against the thyroid hormone. TPO and, and thyroid peroxide antibody and thyroglobulin antibody. And that's Hashimoto's disease. And it's a grain product disease. Now, I mentioned earlier on the ancient Egyptians, the, the sarcophages, they ate a lot of grain products and they had a similar spectrum of disease. So we have become a grain product eating society. Rice sorghum, corn, wheat, oats, barley, and then some of the more sophisticated ones, couscous and quinoa and all the sexy California grains. But we have become a grain-based society that's causing obesity, that's causing diabetes, and that is causing autoimmune disease, of which the most common one, ha ha ha, caught you, the most common one Celiac disease. Celiac disease. Okay? Gluten intolerance. Gluten is the most common protein um, that is causing a problem. But Hashimoto's is the commonest thyroid disease and a very, very common disease. So 
In fact, in a, in a study that I've, I've got here, and you can see it in the show notes, the study's title is Celiac Disease in Children and Adolescents with Hashimoto's Thyroiditis. So they looked at those people that, that had celiac disease and those people that had Hashimoto's in the childhood level, and it is way underdiagnosed because most pediatricians don't look for it, but it's very, very common. And of course, the diagnostic criteria for celiac disease will miss a lot of celiac disease. So real prevalence is likely even higher. But this study showed the prevalence of celiac disease in patients with a diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is higher compared to the prevalence in the healthy pediatric population. And the conclusion of the study, in our study, it was found that the most common complaints at presentation in patients with a diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis included goiter, swelling in the neck, weakness, weight gain, and the prevalence of celiac diseases that was very common. And the study linked the two because both are genetically related and both are due to grain products. One of the other things also to look at is iodine consumption. Not Don't measure iodine levels but making sure that these folks have an iodine, uh, 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 iodine consumption, either as Lugol's iodine or as iodized salt. In 1929, when the U.S. government uh, enforced iodine into the salt, the following decade showed a 4% increase in average IQ. So iodine is not only important for the thyroid, it's also important for the human brain. So iodine as a supplement is essential in our food, and you can either do 2% Lugol's two drops, don't overdose, or you can add iodized salt like we do in our family. I mix the iodized salt together with Redmond's. And I'm working with Redmond's right now to include iodine in their salt. And hopefully they will take us up and at least produce that product. Um, I hope to see that on the shelves in the next few months. Having said which, um, we've also got to look at the genetic predisposition. So look at, at parents. With, with celiac disease, we can measure the anti-tissue uh, 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 transglutamate. Sorry, the anti-tissue transglutaminase, DTGD, it's an immunoglobulin A. We can measure it to determine if you've got celiac disease. And the, it cross-correlates with Hashimoto's. But it's very simple, folks. We don't have to measure these products to prove that we have this as a disease. It's very, very simple. If you don't eat grain products, if you don't eat carbohydrates, you don't have to worry about either of these two diseases. If you have them... We've got to treat them for a while until they go into remission. On average, we're seeing Hashimoto's go into remission five to eight years on average. Now, some people, it doesn't go into, into remission because the antibodies stay and we can measure the antibodies. But for a lot of people, five to seven, five to eight years off gluten containing or off uh, grain products, their Hashimoto's goes into remission. And Nisha Berry, Ken, Ken Berry's wife, has had some success with this. Hi, folks. We're in October, and October is the beginning of the ugliest stretch of the year, certainly in this country. And what I see in my patients, I see Halloween, I see Thanksgiving, um, we see the whole Christmas period, we see New Year. It gets to be very, very ugly toward the end of the year. And I've got a four-year-old at home, and we're going to go out trick-or-treating. Uh, this year, I've got to be Luigi, because uh, he's going to be Mario, uh, if you know what I mean. But one of the temptations out there is our neighbors are throwing candy at everybody. And the cool thing is with my son, they're going to give him matchbox cars. They're going to give him little uh, things to play with rather than candy. But I know the temptation is enormous for me. And one of the things I load myself up with so that as a fat guy, I don't and mentally fat carb addict. I don't have the temptation. I take with me my ketone IQ. And when everybody else is unwrapping uh, their chocolates on the road and there are a couple of places where they do jello shots and, you know, it's my neighborhood. Um, instead of doing that, I'll do a ketone IQ. And it just helps me to get through this. Uh, I'm not going to do candy. I'm not going to do jello shots on the road while my son is gathering all his stuff. And I can still be really have a good time with my neighbors, be very friendly with them. But I don't need to eat the crap that occurs on Halloween evening. As long as I protect myself with my handy dandy box of ketone IQ. That's what I'll be doing this Halloween. Try it. But it is known that the cellular and humoral responses, the immunoglobulins as well as the cellular response, involved in Hashimoto's thyroiditis are directly associated as an autoimmune disease with grain products. It's that simple. So 
on a on a low carbohydrate diet and a diet that excludes grain products you don't have to worry about these diseases particularly for children this is a pediatric paper and if kids are starting to get Hashimoto's disease in their preteens think about the rest of their lives and what do we do we give them sandwiches we give them bread we give them tortillas we give them chips simple way to think about this folks okay whether it's your gut or your thyroid plants are often smarter than we are because successful plants propagate and the grain products are the seeds the babies of plants but they can't get up and go and sow their seed elsewhere sometimes the wind will blow it there are other forms of propagation but what these plants do that produce grain products they want birds and mammals to eat them and so they give you a slight advantage which is the carbohydrate in the seed they give you that advantage so you seek them out you eat them but then the proteins that are associated with that grain because you don't want to process the whole grain because otherwise the seed doesn't propagate those plants have created proteins or creating proteins have by natural selection evolved in those grain products to irritate the heck out of the mammalian gut so that you get the benefit of a bit of carbohydrate, you eat all those grains, you walk down the road, oh my God, and you poop out. You have your shot of diarrhea, you poop it out down the road where that plant can propagate. And that plant is being planted in your own manure, which is fertilizer, even though you've taken the carbohydrates out. So smart. But in the interval, you're getting irritable bowel syndrome, you're getting celiac disease, all kinds of GI inflammation, not SIBO. And you're also having other forms of autoimmune disease, of which the dominant one elsewhere in the body is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but there are others. Don't eat grains. You don't have this as a problem. Don't raise your kids on grains. My son doesn't eat grain products. My son doesn't eat grain products. He's four years old. It's unnecessary. Think that one through the next time you have to have muffins at your birthday or pizza on a Friday. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this helps. If you have Hashimoto's, if you have celiac, give us a shout. Come in and see us. We can test for certain things, but more importantly, we can help you to slowly transition away from the causative problem. And if you get rid of the cause, the inflammation will go away or will be more managed. But also, make sure that you are looking at all your thyroid blood markers before you decide what your dosing is. And you may need a natural component of T4 plus T3 or a synthetic T3 and a T4. Most doctors only look at TSH to dose you. Sometimes they look at a T4. That is hopelessly inadequate. Get the right measures so you can best manage your disease. And if you do, the goiter may go away. Your energy levels are going to go away. Your metab metabolic process is going to go away. Your protein metabolism, your cholesterol metabolism, all those things are going to improve because that's what T3 and T4 do. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If this has made you think, I've done my job. If this has made you change your behavior or change what you look for in your health, I've done my job. And if you like my job, throw me a buck, Patreon or, or PayPal, to keep these free. We have a 501c3. Throw us a buck. Keep watching the show.